Hi there. Happy New Year. This is Vince of VincePrep.com and Agos Consulting. Recent trends to Harvard Business School uh, from Japan, the, there was a very low applicant volume in fall of 2017. So that means that um, those people applying to join the HBS graduating class of 2020, those starting their MBA in 2018, we're hearing from reliable sources that only 50, 50 applicants from Japan, Japanese nationals, either based in Japan or based outside Japan, but people who check the box as being Japanese, there's only 50 people applying in round one uh, in the most recent cycle, and that's low. And so I've been asking a lot of good folks, good, smart people, former including former clients who are now at places like McKinsey, um, I've been asking around, why do we think this is? And we think there's at least three reasons why. First of all, um, the first two deal with the job market, the primary job market and what we call the secondary job market. And the third reason has to do with simply there are now other good options, including the MBA programs here in Japan. A few of them are getting to be thought of as being um, quite good and, and not, uh, you know, coming from those schools is not a reason that a, a company like McKinsey or Goldman Sachs would not hire you. They might still hire you even if your MBA is from Japan. And that wasn't the case maybe 10 or 20 years ago. So, uh, and then finally, I want to talk briefly about how you can use this information to maximize your value as an applicant. Um, if you're among those who are thinking that uh, despite the trend, going against the trend, you still want that Harvard MBA, um, how to use this data and this information to help you increase your chances of getting admitted. So let me talk, first of all, the primary job market is not so relevant to this video, but but it is certainly a factor. Primary job market means those people now in college, in Japanese universities, the, the, the statistics that I'm seeing are 90% or even 95% of those coming from a, a, a good, quote, good, you know, relatively top 20 Japanese university are getting multiple job offers. So um, it's a, it's a, what a seller's market, right? Um, there are there are lots of good jobs if you're coming out of college, and so perhaps you may have thought about applying to MBA while in college, getting deferred admission, like Harvard has two plus two, or Stanford has deferred admission, or Yale has what they call silver scholars, getting admitted, then going and working, and then having a guaranteed spot. That's maybe not as attractive um, if the if you have lots of great job offers right out of college, um, you might not be really thinking or worrying about that too much. This, the second factor I think is more relevant and more interesting, which is that this is a real shift in the market, is that it used to be the case that to get a job at McKinsey, if your first job was at a, say, Japanese company and you wanted your second job to be at McKinsey or Goldman Sachs, for example, um, you needed an MBA in many cases. The company, the hiring manager would say, look, we really like you, but go get that Harvard MBA or the Wharton or Stanford or top MBA and come back to us because it's sort of a credential. We, it sort of proves to us that you're a global, global Jinzai, that you're global standard. And also it helps us sell you uh, and sell our project team to clients because we have, look at, you know, look at our Look at our young, you know, look at our recent hires. They're including a bunch of MBAs from these top schools. Therefore, the very, very high price that we charge uh, is, is, is a value. That's increasingly not the case. I'm hearing from clients who are doing hiring or involved in hiring at companies like McKinsey um, that you could, you could go straight from a top Japanese company into McKinsey or Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan or Bain or Boston without getting the MBA first. And that's a big change. Um, and finally, the third factor is that there's just more competition uh, outside Harvard and also even outside the States. When I started doing this, there was the US sort of M7 schools. There were also, there was London and then increasingly INSEAD has, has rocketed up in the rankings and, and established itself as a really strong option. Um, but when I started doing this work in 2002, Hitotsubashi ICS was a good program, but now it's considered to be increasingly strong. And again, back to the, the client um, who's involved in hiring in McKinsey is saying, look, when I see a resume and 
someone is a, otherwise a very strong applicant, has a good academic background, has a strong professional career, um, and their MBA is from Hitotsubashi ICS or maybe KO MBA, I don't immediately you know, throw them out. I keep them in the pile and, and want to meet them. Um, and so that's a, a game changer. Uh, and it may be also impacting the low applicant numbers from Japan. And the final thing is sort of how to use this information. So if you're deciding that you want to apply, first of all, um, you know, it, it, this is a good opportunity for you. Um, if, you're, if you're working in a Japanese company and your goal is to go to McKinsey or Boston or Bain or JP Morgan or uh, McKinsey, I'm sorry, Goldman Sachs or whatever, if your goal is to go to one of those top firms, Find out, would you hire me now pre-MBA? Um, if the answer is no, absolutely not, get the MBA, then you know. Um, but I think you should be talking to recruiters and seeing what's your value now in the market pre-MBA. Find out, do a bit of market research, do your homework. Um, plan ahead. If you're still, if you're, look, if you're watching this video while you're still in university, I think it's a very good idea to take a GMAT or take a GRE. You have a lot more time to study while you're in school. Um, you're, you're in an academic mindset. Trust me, you're going to be a lot busier when you start working than you are now. And um, the scores are good for five years, at least for GMAT, GRE, and TOEFL, they're good for two years anyway. Take a few tests and find out, um, before you invest a lot in test prep, um, find out what your base level is and find out, you know, you can throw the score out, um, but just take some tests now and see what your options are. Plan ahead. Right now, the job market is very hot, but who knows, right? Things change, and um, think long term and keep your and finally keep your options open. Talk to recruiters, get some scores under your belt, young sooner rather than later. Study uh, when you can. Take the test when you have more time, and when you're in an academic test taking mindset, keep your options open. And if you decide um, that now is the time, and you do want to apply to Harvard or a top MBA program. Um, the good news is you're going against the trend, and so you can do things to stand out. It's easier to stand out in a group of 50 than it is to stand out in a group of 100. That's just common sense. All right, I'm going to sign off for now. As always, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe. Subscribers are the first to know when I've uploaded a new video. I love making these videos every chance I get. That's all for now. Best of luck with your application or your job interview or your life. Uh, all right. Take care. See you soon.